to say happy birthday to all of us <laughs> because this is a celebration of our third year and welcome to our session uh, which is going to be about career and research uh, collaboration opportunities in central asia and i'm happy uh, to be one of the speakers of this session uh, representing university of central asia today we're going to listen also my colleagues and after we finish, uh, we open the floor for questions and answers and discussion. So all participants uh, will be able to talk with us. Just let us know. Of course, if there are any urgent questions appear while presentation, you can uh, type in the chat area and we can later uh, read it and uh, speakers will definitely re respond. And let me start from the introduction of my dear colleague, Dr. Uh, Salim Sumar. I know him for a long time already. He is Director of uh, Academic Development and International Office uh, at the University of Central Asia. And he's really experienced uh, academic. Uh, he took uh, various uh, senior positions in academia uh, and uh, international development across United Kingdom, uh, Europe, Africa, and Central Asia and Middle East. And uh, he actually uh, served in a very uh, interesting positions, which I would say that he really spent uh, over the 40 years in academia. He ha he's really experienced uh, in uh, how to uh, lead and to guide uh, academic uh, work and research. And he educated in United King Kingdom and uh, uh, his main field of expertise, food, nutrition, and public health. And of course, uh, uh, he had uh, experience to be a full professor, chair, rec director of postgraduate studies, research centers, and even head of a school. Uh, he supervised more than 50 PhD and postgraduate uh, theses, and uh, they were done globally. And of course, uh, he published intensively and he participated at the editorial board member in various international journals. And uh, as far as I know, he supported also academic startups uh, in Nigeria, uh, Egypt, and South Africa. So he's helping developing world. And for the last 15 years, He's working in the field of academic development, international uh, development and research in Central Asia. And I'm happy that he's leading this uh, great program that he's going to present. Uh, Dr. Salim Sumar, the floor is yours. Please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you, Medina. Thank you for those kind words. Um, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for allowing me to speak and uh, if I may have the slides, uh, Nujan. Yes, of course. Just a moment. Can you see? Yeah. Can we go full slide? Yeah. Can everybody see the slides? Okay. I see it in the presenter mode, but maybe that's only because of it's me. No, uh, I think, Norjan, you have to switch uh, from yeah. the presenter mode to the full mode. ordinary slide show. Full mode. Okay, just mm -hmm. a moment. I think it's showing the wrong um, the wrong uh, screen, right? Yeah. So I see participants are joining, so we may have more people. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. Can you see it now? Yes, that's better. 
Okay. Um, everybody can see it and hear me? I can hope. you? Yeah, it's good. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Sorry. Actually, we I can hear you okay. and I see the slides. Okay. Everything is fine. All right. Um, Jean, because you need to forward the slides for me. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Right, thank you everyone for joining this morning. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me to talk and I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Thank you, Medina, for that very generous introduction. And uh, we are from the University of Central Asia. For those that don't know us, we are in three countries, in Kyrgyzstan, in Kazakhstan, and in Tajikistan as well. And we are part of the Aga Khan Development Network, which may be new to some of you, but I'll try and explain it to you, which is a very complex organization. Next slide. So as Medina says, there is three of us that are presenting today. There's myself and then Medina takes over and then we have Aikrim at the end. Um, so all three of us will share this presentation and uh, share with you whatever our knowledge is at the moment. Next. I mentioned before that the University of uh, Central Asia is part of the Aga Khan Development Network. The Aga Khan Development Network is really one of the largest development networks in the world, so private uh, networks and NGO. And it has three key foundations. It has the economic development, it has social development, and it has culture. So these three foundations work together what is different about this network is that the fact that the economic development on your left of the screen, which has uh, industrial promotion service, financial services, aviation services, tourism, is for profit, whereas the other two foundations, social development and culture, is not for profit. And therefore, we are very lucky in that respect that the economic development sector of our network in, in total creates a funding of about 4.5 billion every year, you know, which all of us gladly receive and use and make sure we use it all. So um, there are, the Alcan Development Network is in about over 30 countries. It employs more than 96,000 people, mostly from the local communities that we work in. And uh, it, it, it currently has over a thousand programs taking place at any one time. At the bottom, you see the various agencies of the Aga Khan Development Network. So there is microfinance, we own banks, there's the education services, which I'll talk about, the Aga Khan Foundation, which some of you may have heard. There's a fund for economic development, there's the health services, the other schools. Alcan Trust for Culture, the AKU, the Alcan University, which was the first of the university, and then the second university, which is the University of Central Asia. Next slide. I mean, this is the same slide, but essentially less busy, and it just looks at the three pillars of foundations, which is economic development, social development, and culture. So everything to do with the education part falls under the social development uh, pillar or foundation. And there we have Alcon Education Services, the schools, the universities as well. Next. What is the annual impact of the organization or the network as a whole? I mean, in terms, we, we provide electricity for people in Central Asia and about 10 million people globally sort of depend on the electricity from us. We provide food and nutrition and look after 8 million people globally. In terms of safe water and sanitation, over 1.3 million. And in terms of health centers, we have 200 health centers and hospitals and clinic, which sort of reach 5 million people annually. So this is a global impact outside of education. The next slide takes you to the impact in terms of schools and education. So under the education banner, we at the AKDN have about 217 schools, which we operate in 19 countries. As I mentioned, we have two universities. We have campuses in nine countries, and therefore we have over 2 million people and students that benefit from us each year under these, uh, under the education sector. Next. So let's talk about Central Asia, QCA, as we lovingly call it. Um, those are the three countries we exist in. And it was founded in the year 2000 under an international treaty between the governments, the three governments of Tajikistan, Kyrgyz Republic, and Kazakhstan, and the AKDN. It is secular, it is autonomous, it's not-for-profit, and it's a not-for-profit institution. 
and it is the first regional university that has campuses in all three states and this is something that we're very proud of and there are more coming up uh, particularly programs i'm talking about in central asia and particularly in afghanistan so we will see particularly more in afghanistan very shortly as well next Although we started in the year 2000, I mean, the actual thinking or the concept or the startup started many years ago. So in 1997, the first project which looked at the curriculum of humanities and liberal arts was started at the Alcon University, which got taken over by UCA. And like most startup universities, as opposed to undergraduate programs, what started, we started off with the um, research institutes and the first sort of research school that was that we constructed was a school of professional and continuing education in 2006. The year after in 2007, there was a realization that we are going to need a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Central Asian uh, academics and faculty members. So the first faculty members or to be faculty members were actually sent abroad all over the place. And I will talk about that in depth later on as early as 2007. And there were 43 doctoral um, and master uh, scholarships that were actually given out for, for residents in the Central Asian countries. So what we're talking about today in terms of career and research collaborations and opportunities started many years ago in, in 2007. This, the first of the research institutes, which is the Mountain Research Institutes, was started in 2011, as was the Institute of Public Policy and Administration, which Medina will talk to you later on. Then came the next uh, research unit, which was a cultural heritage and humanities unit. And it was only in 2016 that we launched the first campus with undergraduate studies in Narin in Kyrgyzstan. And a year later, we started the Koro campus where the construction was completed. And this was also within the School of uh, Arts and Sciences in, in, in Koro, uh, which are undergraduate programs, which I'll also talk about. We are projecting that the Kazakh uh, campus will open late in 2021, 2022. Um, that's under, um, at the moment under construction. And we will be getting our first batch of graduates. So we have recent, a new sort of university will have a first batch of graduates in 2021, both from Korog and Narin. So this is sort of a timeline very much as to you know, where we started and where we are currently. Next. So as I mentioned before, we are one university. We currently have three schools and the three schools that we have are the School of Arts and Sciences, the Graduate School of Development and the School of Professional and Continuing Education. Within the School of Arts and Sciences, we have three or we will have three campuses. We have two operating campuses at the moment, which is the Narin campus and the Koro campus. The Tekeli campus will be um, coming online shortly in, the, in a couple of years. Um, the Graduate School of Development, so sorry, this, the, the School of Arts and Sciences is predominantly an undergraduate um, uh, school. Then we have the Graduate School of Development and in that we have the three research institutes, uh, Institute of Public Policy and Administration, Mountain Society's Research Institute, which looks at climate change, which looks at earth sciences and all of that. The Cultural Heritage and Humanities Unit, where in all of these there's a lot of research that's taking place. And then we have the School of Professional and Continuing Education, and the numbers in brackets are the number of uh, units that we have. We have six places in Tajikistan with that have the School of Professional and Continuing Edu Education. Kazakhstan has two, uh, Kazakhstan has one, Kyrgyzstan has two, and Afghanistan five. And these are short cycle courses for the general public, basically, where they come in for short cycle courses on accounting, English, languages, yeah. business, and so forth. Next slide. Um, so we talked about the School of Arts and Sciences, and we currently have two campuses um, operating in Narin in Kyrgyzstan. We have an undergraduate program on communications and media, which is a Bachelor of Arts. And we have a Bachelor of Science undergraduate program in computer science. In Horog, in Tajikistan, we have also have two undergraduate programs, uh, a Bachelor of Arts in Economics and a Bachelor of Science in Earth and Environmental Science. So this is predominantly, as I said, an undergraduate uh, school um, located in both of our residential campuses. 
Next slide. In Techly, um, in Kazakhstan, basically when that's operational, we will do two more undergraduate programs. We'll, we'll start a business management, a business and management Bachelor of Arts and a degree in engineering sciences as well. So that will com complete the three phases. Within the university, what we, since we are talking about careers and research opportunities, there is the international office. And within the international office, which is what I had, there are four broad areas at the international office. And we also look after academic development. So it's anything to do with new development, new curriculum, new degrees, uh, faculty development, and all of that, basically. Under those four areas of we are, we look after the strategy and consultation, we look after institutional strengthening, we look after maintenance of global relevance in terms of research, in terms of curriculum. And what we are here to talk about today, we look after graduate, doctoral, and postdoctoral studies under an acronym which is CAFDP, but it actually stands for Central Asian Faculty Development Program because it's predominantly and only for Central Asians in the region. So this is the program that I want to spend a little bit more time with you in telling you the history of it and where we currently are next. So as I said, Central Asian Faculty Development Program, next. So this program started, as I said before, in 2008. And the objective behind this program was to create a pipeline of Central Asian PhD graduates qualified from perhaps some of the best universities in the world so that they could actually take up faculty positions upon their completion at UCA. So this started in 2028. It ran for about 10 years. So in 2018, we had 36 doctoral fellows um, and seven master's candidates. So in total, we had 43 candidates that went through this program and are currently working for either the AKDN or the Institute or, or UCA in some form or another. The second cohort actually started in 2019, and currently we have 13 candidates in the pipeline. So it's an ongoing, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, faculty development program, which will continue through the years into 2028 in this case now. Next slide. If we look at cohorts one and two, and if we look at the nationalities of the, of the people that have gone on this program, uh, Kyrgyzstan has 41% of uh, all the people that have gone through the faculty development program. K uh, Tajikistan, 37%. We are very underrepresented in Kazakhstan, and I'm very happy to be talking here today in the hope that it will reach more people and that we will get more applications for scholarships to do their PhDs uh, abroad. And from Pakistan, the northern areas particularly only, um, we get 13%. So where do these people go? Where do they go and do their PhDs? You will see we send them to Europe, we send them to UK. Previously, I would have said more than half of them go to Europe. Now that we are separate away from UK and from Europe, 27% of us go to the UK, 35% in Europe. Canada takes up about 20% in the US. And then we have others that are either in Europe, or, I mean, which are either in the Southeast Asia, China, and so forth, basically. So that gives you a very overall overview. Some of the partners, and these are just literally some, I think we have over 140 that we have some sort of relationships with this, you know, in, under cohort one, we went to Cornell, we have Carlton there, which Medina has been to, we have Ohio State, we have Toronto, German universities, um, quite a few because we've had two rounds of the DAD programs as well. So those German universities have been very well sort of represented in the partners that we currently have next. These are some of the MOUs that we um, signed over the last year or so. Um, the Cambridge Trust, which gives us the Cambridge scholarships, and I'll talk about that. The Aga Khan University, which is our sister university. Zurich Higher School of Economics, uh, which we've had a long-standing relationship with. Simon Fraser University, based in Canada, which is a, a new and a very active partner of ours currently. Then we have high, uh, we have the University of Cambridge, Alberta, Auckland, and the University of Technology in Sydney. So these are some examples that have happened in the last 12 months. Next. So what else do we do within the international? Um, uh, what, what else do we do under the banner of international academic development opportunities? So this is looking at just literally in the last two years, some of our fellows that have gone through the program and just giving you a quick overview 
of some of the fellows and where they've been in the last two years. Next. Um, we've got Ramzan, who is a, um, a P he's initially did his PhD in Germany under DAD. Um, he actually just has completed his postdoc postdoctoral training at Wolfson Center at the University of Oxford. And he's now back in Narin teaching. Adina has just completed her MPhil at Cambridge in development studies and is back in Narin teaching. Next. Azamat has also finished his PhD from the Czech University of Life Sciences. Shoshambe um, also did his PhD at Humboldt in Germany under DAD and has just come back from Harvard having done his postdoctoral training. And next we will see Rosa. Rosa is a, who also went to Cambridge to do her postdoctoral training at the Faculty of Education. And we have Akarim, who is currently a PhD candidate in education at the University of Cambridge. And we'll hear more from her towards the end. Next. In terms of scholarship and training, we, we also look after both of those. And if you go to the next slide, this the scholarship um, with regards to the University of Cambridge, and I'm focusing mostly on the UK here, was signed in February of 2020, which was the second round of uh, scholarships that we've signed. Um, and it provides scholarships for Central Asians who want to study computer science, engineering, media, business management, and economics. And these subjects are the subjects that uh, we look after, I mean, that we, we currently teach at our undergraduate and research uh, institutes as well. So these are of very great importance to us. And this is why we want more Central Asians who want to do a PhD in those subjects to come forward. Next. We, um, sorry, one thing I missed on the Cambridge thing is we currently just have closed the Cambridge scholarships on the 1st of November for starting in Cambridge in, the, in 2021, September. Another group of scholarships also from Europe um, is the DAD scholarships. This is the second of the renewed scholarship under DAD. And we have a total of 15 scholarships on this. It's currently live on the UCA website. And I think the deadline for this is towards the end of January, 31st of January for a start in any of the German universities in 2021. And, um, you know, we, we're looking forward to actually receiving a large number of applications for these from Central Asian candidates as well. Next. <coughs> the other thing that we do at the in terms of academic training and development is last year we started with the University of Cambridge to do a postgraduate certificate in higher education. This is a professional qualification that we expect all of our faculty members to undergo. OK, and it's basically used in the UK quite extensively. We started that last year. We were hoping to have the second part this year, but unfortunately, with the virus, that's sort of been pushed back to perhaps a spring of next year. But it's we provide training, and this is a, a training that we have done already, and we intend to continue with this training. Next. Um, for the undergraduates, these are some of the four students, uh, three, uh, you know, four students that actually went to Cambridge for the summer school. These are part of our undergraduate programs, and they have just come back uh, the last year from the summer school. And surprisingly, all four uh, candidates who are applying for a master's degree at the University of Cambridge as well. Next. So in conclusion, I mean, the UK, UCA academic opportunities, which are open to anyone, not necessarily just uh, faculty members within UCA. If you're interested in doing so your PhDs, we you know we always are looking for good candidates and we have scholarships at different times over the year. Um, we'd love to hear from you. We are very keen on postdoc studies for once you join us, basically. So most of our faculty members will have the opportunity of doing their postgrad studies. We are very delighted that this year we'll have our first batch of undergraduates and we're looking after them and hoping that they will continue with their graduate studies. We are very keen on training our faculty, training our students and uh, providing in-house training in all of those. And we're very keen on exchanges, be that with students, faculty, any form of exchanges that take place. So that's something that we also look after. Next. <coughs> I just want to show you some pictures of UCA because in case most of you have never been to UCA, and these are just 
a very quick snapshot of uh, various aspects of UCA life. So we are very much student-centered focused uh, training in our teaching. <coughs> we are a liberal arts college. 90% of our faculty have PhDs and majority of them are in the region. Um, we have a one to nine staff to student ratio, which is in incredibly generous. Next. And these are just pictures and uh, which we will just zip through very quickly. Next. This is the academic block in Narin. This is Korog, the other campus in Tajikistan. Next. This is the campus again at uh, Narin. Classrooms. You will see the very modern, very, very well-equipped laboratories, classrooms, modern technology. This is another laboratory. Um, this is a dry lab for computer science. This is another laboratory doing computer labs, media lab. We have our own TV production and radio station as well. So a lot of the material is made in house and this is the example this is a snapshot of the production studio which is one of the finest there is next this is the the student groups where they crash and work together in in groups this is one of the libraries in narin it's uh, what narin campus and the next one is at koro campus library these are the student dorms because oh, they're all um within campus and you will see that the accommodation is even better than what I've had in London. So they are very spoiled. They are very, very beautiful campuses. This is our dining hall in Horog, um, which again is quite large and very well equipped. Students lounge, Horog, sports bubble. Both of the campuses have a huge a sports bubble for the students. So I hope that gives you a flavor of what we do um, at UCA in terms of career and research collaborations. We are, we've not really talked about um, uh, much in terms of uh, university collaborations, but this is something that we would be very, very interested, particularly with Central Asian universities. And I think there is a need to form a joint research base or association of some forms and I think that what we're doing today is the start of all of that. And I, I really hope that we can build on this. Uh, on this, And I, I hope that gives you a flavor of uh, the kinds of scholarships, opportunities, and what we do for our staff. And also, we gave you a quick view of the sort of infrastructure that we currently have in our, in our campuses, which is super modern. And, you know, we are very proud and very spoiled with all of those campuses that we have. So with that, I will hand over to my colleague, Medina, who will walk you through her experience as a Kafni P Fellow of UCA and now who works for UCA in research at the Institute, Research Institute of Public Policy and Administration. So over to you, Medina. Uh, Salim, I'm just wondering if you would like to answer the question that we already have from Sophia. Uh, okay. She's asking, okay. would you sponsor postdoc fellowship in social science? And uh, if I, I, I think this is a, your question. Yeah. Uh, we would be interested in, in, um, in sponsoring um, postdocs per se. It would depend very much on what subject matter and what research. There would have to be a fit between what you want to do and what research is currently going on at UCA or is likely to happen in UCA in the short to medium term. So. The general answer is yes. Um, if you want to have uh, a, a more and discuss more, please contact us at the, if you go onto our website, you will find us at the international office and drop us a line, there's emails, there's contacts, there's everything there. But if you can be, we need to be a bit more specific, but the overall answer is yes, we would be interested in postdocs. Good. Uh, then let's proceed uh, to save the time uh, and uh, have more time for discussion. Sure. Uh, Nurjan, please go ahead with the next slide. So uh, I just uh, think that uh, it's good to start from why I have joined the UCA. And uh, of course, I always dreamed to be a uh, part of the, uh, you know, this kind of university campus to live in small town. But uh, to be honest, uh, that was not the real reason. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please, Nurjan? 
so then the real reason uh, was that uh, the mission of the university, which is to contribute to local development of the remote areas and uh, to preserve uh, the regional uh, heritage and the, the and indigenous culture, uh, that uh, actually mission uh, coincide with the my life mission, and that attracted me to join the university. And I always try to uh, kind of support community-led uh, development. Uh, as a planner, I planned a lot of uh, so-called university uh, towns, but uh, to really build an institution from inside was a great uh, opportunity for me. And the uh, second reason, it's related to our topic today, was that university guaranteed my employment for five years after the graduation. Uh, and of course, I uh, I'm, was already experienced before applying for this program, so I know that to uh, have a dream job, it's not an easy <laughs> deal. So I was thinking that uh, let's uh, start this adventure because if the mission of the university is uh, coinciding with my mission and uh, also it guarantees my employment after the graduation, I will definitely go to this university. So I did not uh, think a lot. And here you see the picture uh, of my cohorts, uh, all started 2012. Uh, here you can see also um, uh, some colleagues from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. We all uh, were welcomed by UCA in Dushanbe. There was a special event uh, that actually was a networking event and team building event and I have a very nice memories. Okay, go ahead with the next slide, please. Uh, so uh, UCA sent me to Canada to do my PhD in public policy, uh, and I was settled at the Carleton University. And later I've learned that uh, I was sent to the, one of the best schools of the public policy in the world. So University of Central Asia carefully select party universities and the school or schools with whom to work. Uh, and I've recognized actually that I was uh, happy to join that school uh, only when I was invited by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development team. So I worked with OECD team in 2016. Uh, they invited me to join uh, the group working on the urban policy review of Kazakhstan. Uh, and during my missions, uh, I met many graduates from Carleton University and I was happy to hear nice words from the executives uh, from the OCD about the quality of doctoral programs in public policy at Carleton. And after this, I was sure the University of Central Asia did a good job when they actually signed contract with Carleton and the School of Public Policy and Administration. Also, uh, thanks to the great support of the Dean of our Graduate School of Development, Dr. Bogdan Kravchenko, I could publish my uh, PhD thesis findings in a format of the book and it's available for readers. And I'm already getting some nice message from the readers. Uh, and uh, this is another achievement uh, that actually could happen because of the great support of the University of Central Asia. And during my study at, the, at Carleton University, I was always in touch with the UCA staff. So even when I, sele I was selecting my topic and I was about to defend my research proposal, I was uh, in touch with uh, faculty members and I was trying to aim uh, to cover the knowledge gap that exists in Central Asia and uh, specifically in Kazakhstan. And of course, uh, Dr. Salim Sumar was always friendly and open for a dialogue and we had many fruitful conversations. We had a, 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 and, uh, happy moments and also some uh, pushes. And I'm happy that uh, I had uh, some motivation from his side to complete uh, my PhD program and uh, start to do to work for the UCA. Please go to the next slide. Nurjan, yeah. So uh, Graduate School of Development actually um, uh, represented by uh, four institutions. So we have a civil society initiative, which is something we're starting. Um, and it can become an in institute. Uh, we have a, a cultural heritage and humanities unit, uh, Mountain Societies Research Institute and Institute of Public Policy and Administration, where I'm working as a research fellow. 
And uh, I would say that uh, Mount uh, Society's Research Institute, it's a really unique uh, institute because it conducts a transdisciplinary research uh, to help inform and contribute uh, to the sustainable mountain development in the Central Asia. And they're doing research uh, to address some local development needs in the region, improving well-being of uh, mountain societies uh, because of their remote location, uh, they are really lacking a lot of resources and access to infrastructure. And they focus on uh, natural resource management, uh, land system, um, disaster risk reduction, biodiversity, uh, climate change, and of course, trying to help uh, by doing research to achieve sustainable development goals. And the cultural heritage and humanities units also, um, uh, they are uh, contributing by original research uh, on trying to um, support heritage and identity of the region. They preserve uh, and keep the doc documenting and uh, doing some et uh, ethological studies. Uh, they are supporting regional scholars uh, who are doing some original uh, heritage uh, research. And uh, they also publish a lot and the uh, research findings available on our website. I will talk about this a bit later. And civil society initiatives, it's a very young starting up uh, institution and it aims to facilitate uh, learning networks around uh, key topics like uh, governance, health, education, uh, and uh, disaster risk management and environment. Uh, they are working with the civil society groups and they have a they created a special network of uh, non-profit organizations from Central Asia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and uh, our Institute of Public Policy and Administration actually uh, uh, started 2011 and uh, trying to push the evidence-based uh, policy making. We are participating in capacity building uh, covering Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan. And we are trying to really uh, do a lot to disseminate the knowledge. Uh, here you see my photo with a group of uh, urban planners. Uh, last year, I conducted capacity building uh, on master planning at the Narin campus for urban planners from Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, also, we really do a lot to uh, build uh, capacity of civil servants. Uh, and uh, myself, I participated in development of the course materials and I instructed three core courses of the Executive Master in Economic Policy program. I uh, aimed to improve policy analysis uh, in the um, Afghanistan government. Also, I instructed civil servants from Tajikistan who took part in certificate program in economic policy. So here you can see two uh, pictures from Bishkek and Dushanbe where I'm staying together with the civil servants from Afghanistan and Tajikistan. And of course, we also are proud to have some special summer schools. It's arranged based on request and we attract funding to host the capacity building. So uh, we are self uh, uh, kind of uh, evolving institutions. So we do create projects and we do uh, attract funding to support these projects. Next, please. Uh, also, uh, just want to say about our research expertise. Uh, so we do um, a lot of economic studies. Uh, we uh, do some uh, agriculture uh, policy related studies. We uh, study poverty and we try to support local economic development and recently started to be engaged in uh, health uh, related uh, policy um, and also studying the food security and uh, different issues around supporting the vulnerable people uh, do involved in agriculture in the region. And uh, here you can see the, the uh, goals from my uh, uh, executive master program policy course. Uh, we made a study on the role of uh, women in economic development of Afghanistan and decided to make an interesting title. So uh, they actually uh, made up with this creative uh, type of uh, uh, title, which was, I think, a good idea. So uh, let's uh, go further. Next slide, please. 
Yeah, and also uh, we have a series of working papers and uh, they are open for public. So if you want to find and uh, read the publication, they're all available on our website. You can also uh, contribute by submitting paper. Uh, we're open for submissions and we do publish not only uh, papers, but also uh, policy briefs. And uh, we also um, uh, conduct public lectures. And uh, this is a picture from Tashkent uh, where I uh, read a I actually presented the public lecture on the child responsive urban planning. And uh, please go ahead uh, with the next slide. Uh, yeah, we also encourage uh, other researchers we encourage to publish in uh, uh, other journals, internationally recognized peer reviewed journals, and also we are free to publish uh, books, uh, chapters, uh, and uh, different kind of interactive solutions to disseminate the uh, research finding results. Next, please. Uh, yes, Norjan, I think this is the last slide, yeah? Yeah, this is the last slide. Last slide. I just uh, wanted to say that thanks to the uh, university support, I also had a chance to become uh, the Sergei uh, Teaching Fellow since 2018. So I'm also going now through the intensive uh, training on how to teach, to teach economics in a uh, modern way uh, using online technologies and uh, uh, specific uh, issues or like corruption economics, energy economics, environmental economics. And also I'm supporting the live streaming of these uh, economic courses. They're all free of charge. So please uh, keep an eye on our news and you can, can uh, take these courses um, if you sign up. And also right now our university is looking for the research fellow especially the Institute of Public Policy and Administration. We are looking for the research fellow. You can visit our uh, website, uh, subscribe to our uh, mailing list, and you always get opportunity uh, and information about new courses, new vacancies, and we're trying to do it free of charge for our Central Asian colleagues. So uh, any courses we run, we're trying to support with some small grants or um, uh, try to make it really uh, available. And this is just a picture with uh, uh, Finn Erling uh, Kudlan. Uh, he is the recipient of the Nobel Prize 2004, who actually told me that he was in Kazakhstan. And that's why I took a picture with him. And he said uh, when he visited Kazakhstan, uh, he saw so many brilliant and talented people. And that's why he believes in the future of the Central Asia. So, uh, but he, of course, he suggested uh, do not uh, do not experiment a lot with your reforms and stay together. And that's why I think uh, let's cooperate, let's be together. And UCA is a part of the big network, and also we are part of this. Uh, to be part of this network, uh, you know, together we can make more than uh, separate. That's all from my side. Uh, so. Please, Salim, uh, are you going to continue or you will go? We, um, we will now hand over to Ekrim, who will give us a brief uh, background on her work as a CAFDP fellow at this moment in time, who is doing a PhD. So a very brief overview of her experience and uh, her research. Over to you, Ekrim. Uh, hi, my name is Ekrim Kargajanova, and I'm currently doing PhD at the Faculty of Education. Uh, the University of Cambridge. I did my MPhil in education at the Faculty of Education, University of Cambridge in year 2017-2018. I was self-financed student during the MPhil, but I, as I was completing my MPhil studies and I was planning to apply for PhD, uh, I realized that my like um, I have to look for a scholarship because my family wouldn't be able to support uh, the four years of study, uh, the PhD study. So. I heard from fellow students at University of Cambridge about the scholarship, and that's how I um, came across the scholarship. And I decided to apply because I thought that it's such a wonderful opportunity to do PhD at Cambridge and then uh, to work for the University of Central Asia. So here I am. I'm currently a third year PhD student at the Faculty of Education, University of Cambridge. And my project looked at the 
research producing function of the Kazakhstani universities. So the research policy of 2011 on research productivity serves as a point of departure for my specific interest in the research producing function of the Kazakhstani universities. So the adopted policy aims at increasing the research productivity at Kazakhstan universities by uh, introducing a requirement for faculty members to publish in journals with, with non-zero impact factor in order to qualify for promotion. So this policy reflects the Kazakhstani state's aim of enhancing its research and innovation capacity and is part of its larger goal of attaining a knowledge-based economy status. So for this project, I am interviewing faculty members at Kazakhstan universities, and uh, I'm currently in Kazakhstan undertaking my field research. I have conducted 25 interviews and uh, I will do 10 more. And my chief aim is to understand what Kazakhstani faculty members think and feel about this publishing requirement and in particular, and uh, Kazakhstan's involvement into a, Kazakhstan university's involvement into a centers of high quality, broad-based cross-disciplinary research in general. Uh, so all in all, like doing PhD at the Faculty of Education, University of Cambridge uh, is exciting because Faculty of Education is such an uh, intellectually stimulating place to be where you have an access to unlimited number of resources. But one of the greatest strengths is the, the level of individual support uh, you receive and the ability to work closely with an expert in your field who will guide you through the PhD. Uh, and of course, I would like to thank the University of Central Asia and Cambridge Trust for providing me with such wonderful opportunity to do my PhD at Cambridge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Akrim. With that, can I hand over to you, Medina and Arya, to take over all questions? We're ready to answer those. All three of us are ready. Yes, uh, actually, we have a question already, um, but it's about uh, distance learning opportunities at the UCA. So maybe it's uh, relevant to the current situation with the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. I think you just described one very good uh, economics, um, uh, you know, tr training that we're actually doing online. So we do have uh, for external people, we do have online sessions, but these are not regular sessions. These need to be, you know, built into them. But as far as uh, internal uh, of our students are concerned, everything is happening online. I mean, I'm based here in London, and I have my colleagues in the US and Canada who are also doing everything to teaching through teams and life goes on essentially. Um, so internally, yes, everything is online. Externally, we, we have maybe three to four sessions a year where we actually do online um, development kind of training in, in various uh, matters. And these are usually run by the research institute that Medina was talking. So as she says, get on our websites and you will sort of find out what's happening next with the the economics one was very useful as well at this moment in time and it's free which was excellent so i hope that answers your question uh, yes i just want also to say that uh, what is in, uh, good for about our university it's uh, evolving so it's a new institution and so if you have uh, any proposals or any ideas of the course uh, you can write us, but uh, you know the, the issue is always to uh, attract funding to support it because uh, we need to pay for instructors, we need to create a workable environment, and of course we need to guarantee the quality. And so all the courses before running, uh, they pass through the academic committee, and uh, and we uh, sometimes run some pilots. And so please sign up for our newsletters, and you will get a lot of information and you will get the names of the right people that you can contact. And then of course, uh, it will depend on uh, your proposal. And if uh, you see that uh, you would like to have special course and it's provided within the university, maybe we can uh, create a public lecture on this topic so that you can be informed. So we usually run this public lecture based on request. So if we see there is a demand for a certain topic, then we run it. And, and we have a number of these public lectures. I think we have at least two to three every month. So like Medina says, get on the on the website, you know, uh, subscribe to our newsletter and you'll be kept informed of those. And we have some incredible world-class people that actually come and want to come and actually work on our 
and, and do these online lectures. Historically, they would have continued to come to UCA, but now these are mostly done online. So, you know, keep an eye out for those, please. I think Sophia was uh, planning to, I think she wanted to ask something and she typed something, but let's I'll allow her to speak. Sophia, you are connected, so you can uh, ask your question. Yeah, thank you very much for all your informative um, lectures. I have a couple of questions. My first question would be, would you expect all your fellows after the end of the research to come back and teach in one of your university campuses in the region? And secondly, I'm very much keen to know more about Tikili uh, campus. Uh, would it be only sort of focused on engineering and economics or other uh, disciplines you, you, you're planning to expand it to, to wider social science disciplines? Thank sure. you. Sure. Um, I think um, in, to answer your first question, um, all CAFDPs or all our fellows undergo that, go to, that get a scholarship will sign a contract with UCA. And the only requirement for this contract is that when you finish your PhD, four years, five years, you will come back to UCA and you will teach as a um, faculty member on a full paid salary as you would get anywhere else or as competitive as you can get in the region um, for the same number of years. So if you've done four years or five years, you will come back for a minimum of four years if it's PhD. If it's a master's, you will come back for two years and work for UCA in one of our campuses, in one of our research institutes, or remember we have the Aga Khan Development Network, which has agencies for schools, education, health, disaster management, banking, finance, tourism. We have the whole spectrum. So not only do you go to UCA, Palmyra Energy is another one, so the engineers would be going there. Not only do you come and teach, but you can also do research with the with the agencies of the Alcon Development Network or even work for them. So it's a very broad thing. And uh, at the end of that period, if you feel you, you want to now uh, not be in academia or with UCA, you're free to go at your at your will, basically. And um, but you know, most of them stay because after four years you can go for your postdoc as well, after four years of teaching. So it's very attractive. As far as Techly is concerned, um, Currently, the undergraduate programs is going to look at just um, uh, business management uh, type of degrees and engineering, but I, I would suspect that there would be more research institutes that will come across because if you think about it, we have MSR with modern research institutes based in Bishkek, but we also have them in Korob, which is across the campus as well. So I, I think they, they, they will appear, but it will take time for sure. But currently, the plan is essentially for undergraduate degrees in, in those two majors. But I would say that, uh, of course, it uh, depends on the design of the, the courses. So we try oh. always uh, to make our bachelor competitive. Uh, so uh, in the business school, we will definitely have a social entrepreneurship type of uh, courses Absolutely. and also the policy, uh, social policy and how to engage uh, customers into development of the product. And so we'll, there will be a place for the social scientists if they will have a, a relevant expertise. So I, I, I do believe that we can allocate. Sure. And also what I like about the University of Central Asia uh, that uh, we have an open discussion. So uh, these civil society initiatives it appeared from inside. So when the people uh, could understand that they can attract funding, that it's something demanded and that there is a gap in development, uh, they propose this. And after the series of discussion with the chairs and with the, uh, the dean, uh, it actually was set up. So uh, we have a, a generous Agahan Foundation, which is investing in capacity building and supporting uh, all initiatives which can really have a great impact in the region and positive impact in development. That's just my... Any other questions? Let have a Let me check. Uh, is there any faculty which reflects tourism as a subject? It's a question from Roshan Mohamed Um Not directly, although we have one student um, in Alberta doing a PhD on tourism as well. But I mean, it'll be more from the 
um, the business point of view, from the policy point of view, um, it, it's but not as an undergraduate degree. But remember, we're also a liberal arts college, right? So we will be teaching a lot of these courses which are to do with liberal arts or tourism, innovation, uh, sociology, anthropology. We do all of these things under, in our undergraduate programs. And because the undergraduate programs, we also have our research um, faculty from our research institutes teaching on this. So th there's always interaction and cross uh, fertilization and it's very interdisciplinary for sure, which is something we, we really value and encourage. I just want to add from my experience, uh, there, there is a school of professional continuing education, which right. actually we're teaching adults. And so, of course, uh, because of the great potential of the countries in terms of tourism development, we are getting some requests on how to, and we did a training for touristic guides. Yeah. And also we uh, created, there was a request to create a special program uh, for uh, creating the touristic roads and uh, tourism marketing and uh, yeah, how to really do a social entrepreneurship in tourism. So there is uh, an opportunity. So the School of Professional Continuing Education, they also develop uh, special courses uh, reflecting the market demand. So uh, we're working with the regional governments and the regional governments, they are really uh, interested in developing uh, some, uh, you know, capacity building and some touristic infrastructure. And uh, if you just uh, also keep an eye on the Agahan Development Network, because uh, the Agahan Foundation strategy also to support uh, indigenous tourism and some, you know, uh, mountain areas tourism. So if it reflects with the mission of the university and the Agahan Foundation, uh, of course, uh, and also, of course, as a researcher, you have to do your own small uh, pilot and explain that uh, there is a demand. And then after all negotiations, if you find funding, then it's, there is a possibility. But myself, when I was working in uh, Tel de Gurgan, uh, we worked with Almaty region government, and we uh, did a series of uh, this capacity building for the touristic industry. We worked with uh, Cas Tourism, and they were really happy, and uh, they requested us to also think about some special uh, tourism development areas for uh, elder people with for children, and so there is an, an opportunity. We just have to think through what kind of uh, uh, you know institution to run it, and uh, if you look at the our research. Uh, working papers, you also will find a lot of research findings on tourism sector in Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and even in Kazakhstan. Okay, so there are all, we have another questions. Uh, Maya uh, asks, uh, oops. So can you give me some useful links for reports according to tourism? Okay, about tourism, uh, yeah, please uh, draw, uh, send us send me an uh, email. I'll just uh, add my email here uh, in the chat area, and I will forward it to you. Uh, and what else we have? Okay. So, uh, any other questions? Maybe Aikirim, you want to ask something. <laughs> Actually, very happy that Aikirim joined us because uh, she's uh, really, uh, I, we hope, join us soon uh, after she graduates. And uh, we also invite other uh, PhD fellows uh, to interact with Aikirim because she's uh, our hope and we also try to be in touch. So uh, if you have any questions, you can address it to Salim or me. Uh, based on our, of course, uh, how, I mean, depending on how busy we are, we try to respond. Uh, and uh, I think we will share this presentation, yeah, and we can send our email addresses. I'm trying now to type it so that people know. Yeah, so I shared my email address. Um, 
we still have uh, some time and let's have a look if we have some questions from the participants. Okay. Uh, I don't see any question. Yeah. Let me if, uh, then, uh, while we're waiting for additional questions, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Salim, for really joining us. Uh, I carry him for your time. Uh, and also Nojan for her technical assistance. Uh, I, I hope the session was interesting. Uh, we are really uh, hoping that uh, more people will join and uh, our network will develop further because it's really have a nice name, Central Asian Faculty Development, which is uh, not only about Kazakhstan, but also about other countries. And this is also opportunity for international exchange inside the region. So I'm always happy to learn from my colleagues from Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. And even if it is in the regional uh, traveling, it's always a great adventure to learn about their culture, uh, the way how people live in the different uh, regions of Central Asia. And hopefully we will have Uzbekistan on board. We are doing uh, a, a great job to really extend uh, our network and include Uzbekistan and uh, maybe other Central Asian countries. So uh, please uh, feel free to, we're open for a conversation. Myself, I experienced this openness of the university. I'm in touch with the rector, with, uh, uh, with Shams, who is really a wonderful person. And a lot of people in Central Asia, I think, uh, to really, if you want to experience uh, a new type of uh, career or research uh, adventure in the Central Asia, please join this university, try and uh, look at our website. I told you that there is a position of a research fellow is open. So if you have a PhD in economics, uh, you're free to apply and it's open until 30th of November. And there are other five uh, positions uh, that uh, you can join and uh, in the current situation, it's hard to find a job. So, but we are doing everything online. <laughs> Even this year, we interviewed all our uh, candidates uh, to join the bachelor degree all together. So I myself even took part in this. I mean, everybody from our <laughs> university, they participate in interviewing. It was a life process and it was a wonderful adventure. So please. Uh, and we don't have, I think we have a question. What is the global aspects in tourism sphere, Kazakhstan? Uh, okay, it's about tourism. Uh, we will talk with her. Can I, can I also add that if you, uh, if you have any colleagues, please get on our website because we have just announced the DAD scholarships as well for PhDs. And we're really looking for anyone who's interested in doing a PhD. So again, either write to us on the email that we've we put on the chat line there at, at International, or simply go onto the website and you will see the DAD uh, scholarships, which are ongoing and they're open at the moment. The Cambridge ones, unfortunately, just closed on the 1st of November, but the DADs are there. We have 15 scholarships, so please look it up and you know have a conversation with us, have an offline discussion with us, um, and then we, you know, we, can, we can advise you how to move forward. There is a question about academic mobility from Sultanat, um, but I think uh, this is also specific, yeah? So do you want to say something about uh, what kind of academic mobility opportunities? Yes, I mean, um, we, most of our MOUs that we try and set up, will, one of the key areas would be academic mobility. And it, it, it's not just postdocs or postgrads, basically. Even postgrads come and teach on our, on our campuses as well, or come and do research. So we are very open to those. Generally, we have quite a number of them coming in. And I think next year we have booked at least three or four people from other universities who want to come there either um, to teach or to do some research or just as exchange, basically. So it is very open to both faculty and staff as well. Yes, uh, myself, I also participate in the academic mobility with, uh, with Erasmus uh, Plus. So we do also, uh, as I told you again, we, ha we are free to apply for funding and uh, attract funding if you really want to have specific mobility. 
So we had it with Poland and we sent some people there and I was there and they actually uh, visited Narin campus and uh, provided lectures. So uh, there are many opportunities. Uh, we just have to try to also put our efforts to develop proposal, to uh, get assistance from the international department, get in touch with the universities. And of course it's possible. It depends on the, if it's interesting for the overall development of the university and if it's add a value to our development. And we have a uh, Maya's uh, hand. So Maya, please, do you have a question? You can now sp turn your mic on and ask a question. Maya. Okay, okay. yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you very much for this such interesting conversation. I just want to, to think and to ask about uh, maybe uh, do you have any uh, kind of fellowships uh, during the PhD work? For example, I think that um, um, the, it's okay that we have internship according to our laws in Kazakhstan, uh, for example, uh, during three months. And maybe there will be some kind of conferences or uh, other fellowships, or which are just confirmed by our uh, laws. And so we can get more information about that. Thank you. Um, we haven't got anything which is structured, but I mean, we are like uh, Madina keeps saying, we're very open to listening to any offers or any new um, collaborations. So, you know, do write to us and we can actually give you the information and put you in touch with the right people if we don't have the answers. But yes, I mean, we've, we've had them in the past, but they're very much on a, on a, on a one-to-one -one basis, on a needs basis as well. So, you know, always, you know, get in touch with anybody else. If in doubt, come to the international office and we'll put you in touch with the right people. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, at our Institute of Public Policy and Administration, we have internships, but it depends. So if we have a project, which is interesting, and we need some, uh, you know, a short term capacity, and we do not uh, need to hire a person for the longer term, we usually open up the research internships. And for this, again, to sign up for our mailing, uh, this uh, newsletter, and you will get this uh, short term internships information. And of course, you can come and travel and, or work distantly and be part of the research. Okay, thanks. And another one uh, question. Um, maybe I'm just, uh, before I just make some projects in tourism sphere, is it possible to make some cooperation with all of you uh, to make some global um, projects uh, for the young generation according to tourism and uh, just cooperate with the research work? Also. Sure, Maya. I mean, why don't you drop me an email on the email that we put on there, the international, and I'll put you in touch with the right people. As, as uh, Medina mentioned, um, we, we do have these short cycle courses that we do, and tourism is one of the key uh, requests that we get from people. But remember, there's also within the AKD and the larger uh, group where, you know, this work is critical, especially given the mountain societies at which you know, we, we tend to specialize in. So definitely, I mean, do, do drop us a line and then we can have a conversation offline and I can certainly put you in touch with the right people. Okay, thanks. Good. So we started to have some more questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, about dual degree opportunity. Uh, I think we have, yeah, at uh, the bachelor level, level, there is a du dual degree opportunity, yeah. Would you please uh, explain it a little bit, Salim, if you know? Yeah, I mean, we can do it internally, uh, but we are, we're not yet there as far as exchange is concerned. Our joint degrees with external institutions are concerned. This is something that I, we're definitely working on. And this is only our first year that we'll have our graduates, so it's early days for us. But very much on our radar, definitely very much on our radar, but not as yet. Good. So. We have, uh, I think we answered all the questions. Yeah. I don't see any other hands. So then maybe we uh, we can finish. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, please uh, uh, drop uh, your urgent question if you have or raise your hand. Otherwise we will uh, 
it will be a sign for us that the session can be over and we finish. So let's have a look. Okay, good. So there is no question. By the way, uh, if you have any feedback on this session, you can uh, type on in the chat area or you can just, uh, you know, send us email. I actually see that uh, Nurjan, she shared the email address of the international office. And I also shared my email address. I can share it again if you did not get it. Uh, so we are open. Uh, we will try to um, really be in touch with you. And this is not the last meeting, I think. This is the first meeting. And uh, you're welcome if you have any ideas. If we cannot realize it uh, by engaging University of Central Asia, but we are a growing community. So we are the association of PhD students. So we will try to find uh, other opportunities. It's our third year, we are small, but we're growing. That's why please uh, don't be silent. Uh, don't stay with your ideas, uh, share them, uh, uh, engage us and uh, we will try to help you. Good, then uh, thank you, uh, dear speakers. Uh, thank you participants for your uh, active uh, contribution to this discussion. Uh, any uh, unanswered questions, uh, please address via mail. Maybe you can have them later. And uh, let's keep in touch. Uh, good luck to all of you. Good luck uh, to all of us. And let's uh, recover <laughs> and let's leave this <laughs> continuous, <laughs> continuing uh, situation. I hope we all will meet physically. And uh, maybe uh, Salim, Salim, you're always welcome to Kazakhstan to uh, meet uh, with us and with the potential candidates from Kazakhstan. But uh, Let's see and wait. Uh, let's hope everything will be fine. Good. Uh, so enjoy your evening and the rest of the day. It was great uh, event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.